Speaker, sir, I rest to make arbitrary defense on the demise of Sri Yogi Wang Nao a sitting MLA and advisor who passed away recently due to a heart attack in the early hours of the 28th of August 2013 and 2023 at the CIHSR de Mahu. The power is connected from Tuli, Nagamura, Tijit, Mon, Apoy, Angtangyan, and Rich Togu. At the distance of 230 kilometers. So because of that long distance, we have a lot of problems because the power has been shared. in the Nagarimura, Tijit, Mon, Apoy, and Angchangya. So when it reached to Togu, we have a, only a zero path light. So because of this reason, we want a better connected to the Togu division. When the power, when the light come, when the power is there, the people is joyful and happy, and all people started shouting and appreciating the power department. But if light goes off, the everybody started cursing or blaming the power department. So, I would like to request the honourable minister that from Tuli to Nongleng to Taubu is a 126 kilometer only and short of 104 kilometer approximately. So if we have a connection, because the Mount District as a whole is a connection, it is taken from the Tuli. So if it is taken from the Tuli, if we put a Nagamura, Dijit, Mon, then going up to the Taubu is, I think there, there are a lot of problems in the route. So I would like to appeal to the Honorable Minister that because Longland and Mon is under the uh, Duli Division. <coughs> so if we could have been given from the Duli to Longland, Longland to Togo, I think we will be very happy. This is my appeal to the Honorable Minister to take this. Whatever it is, we shall do our best. We are aware that the transmission line has taken a very long route, but the shortest route from San Sadio to Mon, Tobu, could not be installed. So this time we have an alternative, which is a 137 kV line from Longland to Mon, which will go through Aboy, Mobum, and Tobu. This, is, uh, this has been initiated under Naba City Plan. We will address it in any case. Thank you, sir. I raised some questions on the Armed Forces Special Powers Act, 1958, to our Honorable Deputy CM in charge of Bomb and Border Affairs, and also questions related to the Border Affairs. I am uh, happy that he has elaborately replied to my query. However, Speaker, sir, I have some uh, concerns and some suggestions, and also some of the some assurance uh, I want from the Honorable Minister. Well, uh, in the reply, it has been the, given that the whole of Nagaland is not a, not declared as a disturbed area. That is a very encouraging news for us. I am from a student background as an NSF president before joining politics. And uh, this was in my mind that uh, we should repeal this Armed Forces Special Powers Act. But after the 1958 uh, enactment by the government of India and subsequent amendment, even non commissioned officer, which means below the rank of a captain, are also being empowered to arrest, shoot, and kill. Such is a law which is very draconian in a democratic country like India. Now, uh, you are aware that uh, how subsequently it has been, you know, uh, imposing in our uh, Naga family. Now, what I'm trying to say is, it is now already 69 years imposing this uh, Armed Forces Special Powers Act. I, for one, have not seen 
any uh, positive result out of imposing this. At that point of time, Mr. Kokoto Sakai was the Prime Minister of the Federal Government now, FGN. The, the government, the, the political organization was the NNC. The government was the Federal Government now. Now he happened to meet General K. S. Tem Yang on October 16, 1956. They're very popular, famous uh, Indian general, Indian Army general. They had a conversation which I don't want to go into deep for the want of time. But after that, General Tamiya met Prime Minister uh, Jawaharlal Nehru. And uh, Jawaharlal Nehru, I'll read out what he has said. In their conversation with uh, General Tamiya, said Nehru banged his hand on the table, probably he did like this, with his fist shouting. What is a general for? Question mark. Can't you crush a handful of tribal rebels? Well, we have our rights, asserting our rights, but they, we were very much rebels. Gen what did General Tamiya reply? The speaker said, I would like to bring to your notice that the Naga issue is not a law and order problem, but a political problem requiring political wisdom for solution. That was the reply from none other than a great general of Indian Army, General Tammy, to the <coughs> Prime Minister of uh, India, Nehru, who was very powerful at that point of time, who could challenge even the, I mean, a uh, stager like uh, Nehru. But that was the message put across to the Prime Minister by the general. Now, I'll come back to the peace mission. There, there were three, peace, three member peace mission, Reverend Scott and uh, this. Now what Jayaprakash Narayan said about this, one of the members of the peace mission he was. It is not beyond human ingenuity to find a formula that would satisfy at the same time the defense need of India and the aspiration of the Nagabi. He further pointed out it was more important to keep friendlier Naga in our frontier in a new constitutional manner than forcibly keeping the hostile Naga with India. This is not my comment, a comment rendered by none other than a great personality in the Indian uh, nation, Jai Prakash Naren. What I would like to put across to the, the present government and the only cabinet is, yes, an endeavor has been made by the Cabinet, the government, even in the previous occasion, of recommending the lifting, <coughs> repealing the armed forces by your power. Right? And with their effort, the major chunk of the Naga, Nagaland area has been really withdrawn. I'm happy with that. But more effort uh, needs to be done because we are looking for an investment. There are a lot of uh, uh, anxiety within the present government to bring about investment, to bring about uh, economic development. Now, unless we create a conducive atmosphere, we have to create a confidence to the business house. And when there is a peace process installed going on, I don't see any reason why Armed Forces Special Powers Act should continue. And therefore, this is my appeal to the government of the day to uh, recommend further for lifting for total repealing of the Armed Forces Special Powers Act. Just day before yesterday, for your attention, Honorable Speaker, sir, this is the uh, Nagalan Post reported on the 9th of September. The Assam government withdraw AFSPA, DAA, which means disturbed area, from the entire state, Assam to center. Assam, as a short line of read out, Assam cabinet on Friday decided to recommend <coughs> to the central government to withdraw the Armed Forces Special Powers Act and the Disturbed Areas Act from the entire state. It's a little longer, but that is what I would like to put across. This is what uh, the Assam government is also putting an effort on this. Uh, uh, may not be very necessary to go on debate, but this is what I would like to put across. In view of the improved law and order and peaceful solution across the state for a long time, and the own queen ceasefire of government of India and Nagaland, with all the veterans for many years, we have been regularly recommending the government of India for 
They put in any area of the state as disturbed area and giving Nagaland outside the purview of Aksta. The government of India, however, till now has taken the area of 18 police stations of the state outside the purview of Aksta out of 75 uh, police stations. Speaker, sir, in this regard, the honor member wants assurance from Minister in charge of home, but this is the decision is up to the government of India, so I cannot give assurance in this house. I have been personally requesting our Honorable Deputy CM in charge of home and border affairs to complete this. This uh, sometime two, 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 three months back, there was uh, an encroachment. Not, not only encroachment, but the when well, National Case Commission, ONGC uh, survey group, uh, we don't know who is authorized them, they came uh, near that uh, area called a village called Lungsiri village, which is uh, a new village established by the Liu Lungbidang village, which falls within my constituency, 4500. I brought to the notice of the Honorable CM also, and to the Honorable Deputy CM on this issue. But when I checked out the post, the, the NAB post, which is supposed to mend that area, were missing in action. And the reason was that Honorable Deputy CM has given the contract work to some people to execute for construction of what we call Tarek, Pangala, I don't know those terms. Uh, on his part, he has done it, but uh, they are think that the execution part is still uh, new. So I would like an assurance from Honorable Deputy CM that he is telling in the, uh, he is uh, replying that the work is in good progress and expected to be completed by March 2024. I can't wait, Speaker said, till March 2024. About this uh, Etang uh, Police London post. Yes, the completion time has been given for 2024 March. But I assure the Honorable Member that before Christmas, I will take you for inauguration of the Etang post. <laughs> For this uh, <coughs> upgradation of S2 civil in Melapani uh, border <coughs> area, the committee headed by Commissioner Nagaland for looking into proposal for creation of new administrative centers and their <coughs> upgradation may examine this if a proposal is received. Thank you. Thank you. Mr. Speaker, sir, I don't have any supplementary question as such, but I want to give a suggestion or a request rather. Uh, illegal immigrants has become a major concern for the entire state. Until unless we take it up very seriously, in the near future, we're going to face a lot of problems. So I want to request the government to bring out some stringent policies on deploration, on action plan, and not forgetting creating a detention center for the illegal immigrants. Because once we start action, then they'll be scared to come. But until unless we take some action, they will continue to pour in. And therefore, this is my request to the Honorable Deputy Chief Minister. Thank you. Honorable Speaker, sir. I think the uh, illegal immigrants are everywhere. And these illegal immigrants, mentioning illegal Bangladeshi uh, Immigrants. I think we may avoid that Bangladeshi because it is very sensitive to pinpoint one person or one community. So in general we can ask, we have a problem of Bangladeshis, but that can be dealt with. But we should not point out a community or a people. That is my comment. But I have one supplementary or rather query. I am made to understand that 
a certain syndicate or group is trying to convey on our state lottery and take advantage. I want to know whether it is true. If so, what steps are the government taking against those people? Thank you. The reply had made it very clear that there are no cases against the Nagaland State Lottery, either with CBI, ED, or GSD, or CNAG. And there were some meetings at the Home Minister, and in that meeting, the state government had replied and Home Ministry was satisfied and it was resolved. As supplementary question has been raised, it is true. I believe it is uh, much of these cases, activities are being carried out on the behalf of business rivalries as well as to blackmail the Nagaland State Lottery, particularly the distributors. So there is a gang of criminals who are trying to do this. Lottery means they want to get lottery by their own means, creating problem and demanding money. Some. Because of their illegal activities, F FIRs were filled by, filed by well-informed lottery customers of West Bengal against one of the main complainants by the name of Atul Bokreya in FIR number 241 of 2022. Harid Street PS Calcutta and FR number 206 of 2023 in the Vidanagar South Police Station. So in Nagaland also we had five cases by the North Police Station and the PHQ also. And he has been summoned to appear, but he is absconding, but most likely he may land up behind bars, because he cannot substantiate his allegations, and therefore we are taking a strong case in this, and one of the ideal lotteries all over the country, Nagaland is doing, within the rules, and that's how others are also allowing Nagali Lottery to be sold. And they are getting maximum benefits. Mm. Mr. Speaker, sir, I'll, this is, there's a lot of speakers, I'll try to be very brief, as requested. As a matter of fact, I will be failing on my part if I don't thank the leader of the house and his party, the NDPP, not forgetting Konrad Sama and the N NPP party for coming out, all out against the <coughs> Uniform Civil Code. <coughs> and also thereby the Meghalaya Assembly ad adopting a resolution against this. <coughs> Mr. Speaker, sir, we Nagas are simple-minded and we have a very clean thought. We think that everybody is equal. But one thing I want to remind, or rather caution this house, of course subjected to correction is, we think that Article 371A is always there to protect us. As a matter of fact, I agree, Article 371A is a constitutional guarantee to the people of Nagaland. But has this article over the years, as guaranteed, safeguarded us in all aspects? I don't think so. 
and I have some proof and evidence. Mr. Speaker, sir, Article 371A is like <coughs> one of the best weapons under the Constitution which guarantees to safeguard our rights, our heritage, our laws, our practices. But for me, this Article 371A has been in cold storage for too long. We have never made use of it. It's like an old rusted gun. Once we tried, we tried to polish it, we tried to make use of it, but it misfired. For example, in 2010, under our same leader, he was the chief minister, I was also the minister then, we adopted a resolution on petroleum and natural gas. And that resolution empowers us. We said that we are empowered under Article 371A. So we will pass our own resolution as far as exploration of oil and natural gas is concerned. And as soon as we pass that resolution, an uh, unstarred question in the Lok uh, Raja Sabha was put by our late former MP CM Chang. And the answer came as a surprise shock to the entire Nagas. So I'll read a small para here. As soon as the matter came up to the notice of Ministry of Petroleum and Natural Gas, it was taken up with the Ministry of Home Affairs. The Ministry of Home Affairs has advised that Article 371A does not confer legislative powers to the Legislative Assembly of Nagaland for regulation and development of mineral oil. And so they have given us this gun, but it is when we tried to make use of it, it misfired. Then an order came from the Home Ministry asking the matter has accordingly been taken up with the Chief Minister Nagaland, requesting him to withdraw the notification and resend the Nagaland Petroleum and Natural Gas Resolution 2012, as well as related resolutions. Therefore here, why I am cautioning this House is, we should be very careful in our thoughts and our dealings. We should not always think that Article 71A day A is there to protect us. It will protect us if only we make use of it and we pass resolutions in the House, in the Assembly. Coming to UCC, human memory is very short, Mr. Speaker. I want, you, I want to take you back in 2019, Lok Sabha elections, where the NDA government, including the BJP RSS, with commitment, they had gone to the elections with some few promises. And they call that mega promises. Their mega promise one is the Ram Temple in Ayodhya. Our Hindu brothers, they believe that their god Ram was built, uh, was born in Ayodhya. And so they had to build a temple. So their mega promise one is to build a Ram Temple in Ayodhya. And today it's on the verge of completion. And in January, I'm very sure they're going to inaugurate this which will become a booster for the party's election campaign. <clears throat> Mr. Speaker, sir, their mega promise too. Let us recall Jammu and Kashmir. Their mega promise too is the abrogation of Article 370. Article 370 in Jammu and Kashmir was also done away with. The two mega promises, one, two, is fulfilled. Now today, what state is Jammu and Kashmir in? Jammu and Kashmir state was divided into two Union territories. One is Ladakh, one is JNK. And since 19, 2019, in JNK there has been presidential rule. And till now, it is continued. Against the wishes of They are asking, seeking for elections, pleading for elections, but the center is given a blind ear and they are not listening to them. 
Moreover, all the rules and regulation is going against them. If I'm to state UCC in my own words, very simply, not trying to target any party or individual, let me define it this way. Uniform Civil Court is a subject matter propounded by BJP RS, which is deeply rooted in Hindu Taf. It is the foundation of totalitarian rule of a dictator. We must remember uniform law and dictatorship are two sides of the coin. We have seen it in the past that only dictators have enforced uniform law successfully. UCC will remove pluralism and diversity and thereby it will fulfill the dream of one nation, one religion, one culture. That means the country is heading for a dictatorship rule if UCC is enforced in the entire country. Either that will be the end of minorities or disintegration of India, where our rights and equalities will be forgotten. Mr. Speaker, sir, as a proof, as an evidence, let me cite some few examples where UCC was, uniform law was successful. For example, General Franco of Spain, Saddam Hussein of Iraq, Mussolini of Great Britain, Hitler of Germany, Stalin of Russia, and in the present context, it's Kim Jong-un of North Korea. It's a dictatorship rule. And so uniform law is compulsory, it is applied and it's successful. So therefore, this uniform law, UCC, is not applicable in our land. That is what I want to say. I really want to thank the Honorable Chief Minister and the entire cabinet for taking up this very important issue and taking the whole team to Delhi and getting verbal assurances from the government of India that it will not affect the tribes. But I once again want to state, let us not take verbal assurances for granted. If at all it has to be guaranteed, it should come in black and white protecting us. Therefore, I once again move this August House to pass a resolution rejecting the UCC bill uh, in total in this second session of the 14th House. Thank you. If the Uniform Civil Court is amendment, the Article 371A will be automatically be removed in our customary right and traditional law will be no fear seen. Therefore, Honorable Sir, as the guardian of our state, the Assembly may kindly pass the resolution to oppose the Uniform Civil Code. The UCC, I think in other words, one nation, one law, which is in the Indian Constitution, more than seven decades back, it was known that it's a threat to social, religion, and customary laws. And till today, it remains a threat. And therefore, this should not bind us from the liberty of being a tribesman as Nagas. This Uniform Civil Code is an indulgence in the personal law, such as personal scriptures, marriage, divorce, guardian, and succession, which are right to religion and social practices of the Nagas and customary laws and procedures are infringed. Therefore, the meaning of special status of 371A, which was provisioned in the year 1962, contradicts the fundamental rights of the Nagas. The implementation of the UCC also violates the fundamental rights guaranteed by the Constitution including the Article 25, freedom to profess and practice 
one's religion. And Article 29, right to have a distinct culture. It also contradicts the provisions that was granted to the states of Nagaland and Mizoram. I also would like to refer to the 2018 report given by the Law Commission of India, which stated that the Uniform Civil Code is neither necessary nor desirable at this stage in our country. Like other colleagues have already expressed and shared, I also have the opinion that the enactment of this Uniform Civil Court would have uh, negative implications on our diverse cultural practices, personal laws, and religious practices. I also have the opinion that the enactment would have adverse consequences on the fundamental rights of the Constitution of India, that is, right to cultural and educational right of minorities, which is enshrined in the Article 29 and 30 respectively. And the right to equality, Article 14 of the Constitution of India, may also be compromised by the imposition of Uniform Civil Court. Therefore, I have the opinion that this enactment should be, should not be applied on the state of Nagaland. I also would like to humbly suggest that as we are equipped with a weapon that is Article 371A, which gives us a choice to have a decision whether to let it apply upon us or reject it. Using effectively the constitution which has guaranteed, which has safeguarded the interests of the Nagas, that is Article 371A, I would humbly suggest to the House that a resolution may be passed to request to the Center, to the Union Government of India to exempt this UCCP, uh, to exempt from applying this UCC for the state of Nagaland. Thank you, sir. Mr. Speaker, sir, why this, there is an apprehension that this act will affect us is because of the past Peter experiences. I'm very happy the House is going to utilize Article 371A to defend our rights, and that a resolution to UCC is going to be passed, and I believe out of this debate and conversation, another resolution to protect our land, our forests, will be adopted. Mr. Speaker, sir, as I stated, there are a lot of speakers. I'll be very brief and to the point. Over the past years, Mr. Speaker, sir, as I have stated, the bitter past. In the year 1998, 15th September, the Ministry of Environment and Forest has sent a letter the applicability of Forest Conservation Act 1980 to the state, along with Home Ministries, Home Affairs Ministry, Office Memorandum, which was sent to our state again. Another letter, letter from the Department of Legal Affairs, Advice C section. Here, the learned additional solicitor general write his opinion, dated 8-8-98, has opined that the Forest Conservation Act 1980 is applicable to the state of Nagaland. When they pass a bill, knowing fully that Article 371A still protects us, they impose it on us. That's why today, the need for deliberation, discussion on such issues is of paramount importance and adopt resolutions. Mr. Speaker, sir, the Forest Conservation Bill 2002 introduced by the Union Ministry of Environment, Forest and Climate Change. 
got its clearance from both the Houses of Parliament despite several objections from different corners of the country. Apparently, the government introduced the bill, which is now the law. The Union government made amendments in 2023 to the Principal Forest Conservation Act of 1980 and inserted two ominous fate for Nagaland and the entire Northeast states. The amendment weakened the central forest laws on protection and environment and conferred full powers of use of forest land irrespective of ownership to the central government within 100 km radius from LAC or international boundaries for strategic laner projects and national importance and concerning national security. It is true, Mr. Speaker, that infrastructural and industrial developments are inevitable. However, by allowing such activities as creation of check posts, fire lines, ecotourism facilities, safaris, civic, civic culture, exploration, dams, seismic service, etc., instead of preserving our precious forest lands covering, which we are so proud of, they are just made more vulnerable for damage and destruction. Points to ponder, Mr. Speaker, points to ponder. This act undermines the powers of the state government, true and true, since the central government has the full and the last say on everything related to forest. It may be noted that forest is a part of the concurrent list. Prior to the amendment, the state government is required to get a prior approval of the central government to assess forest lands to any entity not owned or controlled by the government. Now, with the present amendment, state government cannot assign any forest area to any entity without the approval of the central government, whereas the central government can take away any portion of land, forest, from their projects. These are all subjected to correction, Mr. Speaker. This will definitely make a mockery of Article 71A. It definitely comes in conflict with the constitutional safeguard guaranteed to Nagaland State through Article 71A. Instead of the center seeking the approval of the state to implement any of the bills act in Nagaland, now Nagaland government will have to seek the approval of the central government, which is a very sad story. It has just turned around. The act makes the whole of Nagaland vulnerable since a large scatter of state is covered with greeneries and forests. In general, as has been debated all over the country, this act stands as a threat to tribal lands, a land from which we got our history, culture and identity. It can either fall into commercial trap anytime or turn into militarized zone in the name of national security. Mr. Speaker, as I stated, Ministry of Home Affairs, Ministry of Urban Affairs, Ministry of Law and Justice, <coughs> they have written in black and white to the state government, stating that Forest Conservation Act 1980 is applicable to the state of Nagaland. So today, if we don't act, Forest Conservation Act 2003 also will be applicable in the same manner. When Mizoram government can take up a resolution in the house rejecting this. Why can't we do the same protect, to protect our people and land? We have the legal opinion of Y.D. Chandra Chud, Chief Justice of India retired, made on 16 1st, 1997, who opined that Forest Act 1980 is not applicable in Nagaland under Article 71A. We should explore this one. We should take this copy and go to the court and fight it. Because the Chief Justice is retired, he says it's not applicable, whereas the mere additional Solicitor General of India stated that, that it is applicable and thereby, basing on his words, a letter, three letters have been written to the government of Nagaland. So while terming this law as anti-tribal and anti-constitutional, I would like to move this out of house to pass a resolution rejecting or rather protecting our rights and all that. On with regards to this Forest Conservation mm -hmm. Amendment Act 2023, Honorable General Minister Bhupendraji has already said that we will be exempted from it. So it is still not an act, it is 
going to be. Let me want to remind this other house that the Bharatiya Janata Party leadership has always given recognition to the Nagas and to the tribals of this nation. So, let us believe in the central leadership also. And henceforth, let us all work together to protect our people because this is the end of the hour. Recognizing that the BJP Nagaland, led by my BLP leader Shri Patanji, myself and all the honorable BJP leaders, supports honorable chief ministers and this August House any resolution to exempt according to what is needed for our people, this Forest Conservation Amendment Act 2023. Thank you very much. Who has stirred this house into an operation theater? Totally diagnosed every portion of the act. All his points are very interesting. We thank him for the research that he has conducted. Now, the principal act of 1980 states about conservation of forests and everything connected with conservation. So, we will look it through that window and from the aspect of the air. And we consider what the 2023 latest amendment, it contravenes the very spirit, defies the very intention and the motive behind the enactment of the principal act. It is all about deforestation, it's about destruction, de-reservation, anti-preservation, anti-conservation. So it contravenes directly, it conflicts with the entire idea behind the policy. So we are baffled to take in the first place as to how such security-oriented acts can be fitted in through a Forest Conservation Act. This act is not in the interest of the forest dwellers, the indigenous people, and the tribals, especially bordering the international, dwelling in the international borders of this country. In the south, southwest, southeast, Further up in the northwest, they have a maritime border with the ocean, the seas. It is especially the north and the northeast which borders with our other nations through the forest lands. It will have multiple implications and will be against the very interest of our our elders, the pioneers, fully knowing that ultimately, one or the other day, we would be facing such kinds of challenges, have asked for it through the 16 points to the government of India. And we are grateful that two and a half years after 1960, on the 2nd of December 1962, this Article 371A was enacted and given to us to protect our land, our interests, and our people. Our case is something like the Rip Van Winkle, the story that we read in school in the English prose. We were sleeping over it. These powers were vested in this house since the inception. For more than 50 years, we were in deep slumber, like Rip Van Winkle suddenly woke up and started becoming aware of his surroundings. Today, we have realized our situation. But the protective provisions we have also realized. But we have not activated it for more than five minutes. It is only in the 68th year of the state that we are putting this into action. 
This Article 371A is one of a kind. It is exclusive. It is special. It has not been given, nor there is any chance that the government of India would ever give it. So it is up to us to utilize it. 371 today has become like that saw. There's a hole in the bucket. We start on any policy, any issue, we talk and we come back again saying 371. So it is for us to realize the powers. We don't have to refer to all the other acts, amendments, provisions, and clauses in this particular ministry, whatever the courts may say, with due respect to the honorable courts. Still, the interpretation and the step is of the government of India, where we are focused and should be. I do propose that we move a resolution seeking for exemption of the latest forest land. Thank you, sir. For Nagas, honorable speaker, sir, and for indigenous people, as already expounded by the former speakers, land and forest are integral part of our life. It is our culture, it is our asset, it is our, uh, it is our inheritance, and most of all, it is our identity. Now, once we lost the land to the government, then what do we have? I keep telling my supporters, my people, that Nagas are very rich people. Why? Because we all are landowners. None of us are beggars, actually. All of us are landowners. Nagas are all landowners. And, and, and therefore, we all are very rich people in that sense. Now, what does this amendment uh, envisage? It is talking about 100 kilometers from the international border. The the Ang house in Longwa passes through international border. Honorable Speaker, sir. Tamali Guri Thake, Ang to India de Homai, Aro Pat to Parma de Kai, Amakan in the Like that, it passes through his kitchen. And we are talking of international border. Don't you think it will affect directly to the villagers? Forget about forest, even village. Ostita effect Guri, Honorable Speaker, sir. Ito Garane, this has to be. Uh, the, 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 the provision of the 371A is very clear. Ownership and transfer of land and its resources shall apply to the state of Nagaland unless the Legislative Assembly of Nagaland by a resolution so decides. That's what we are debating. And therefore, I would strongly suggest that this August House adopt a resolution uh, rejecting even the 1980 Principle Act, the Forest uh, Act, not only the amendment because we cannot be selective in our rejection. And therefore, I would uh, strongly propound that uh, it has to be, we have to go back to the uh, principal act, and this house can decide on that uh, aspect. Thank you very much. Although we are exempted from the provision of Forest Conservation Act 2023, protect, and also protected by special provision of the Indian Constitution under Article 371A, we should not put the matter to rest, but we need to critically examine the bill for ramification and also adopt certain measures which can be beneficial to the state. Also, the applicability of Chumlen Act 1970 while adopting a resolution or framing our own act. Several societies, tribal hosts, and organizations have also strongly opposed the recent passage of the Forest Conservation Amendment Act 2023 by the Parliament. We need to listen to the voice of the people and address their apprehensions and in the interest of the public and the state. And for posterity's sake, it may be prudent to pass a resolution opposing the new Forest Conservation Amendment Act 2023. Land and forests, which we call it resources. It belongs to the people. This had been recognized by the British colonial and also 
by Government of India placed in Article 371A. But for too long, because of Naga political movement, we are not doing what we need to do at home. And everybody is talking about politics. But politics without land and resources, the people will be in trouble. In our map, which you have shown in the slides, is 1925 map. Now, after statehood also, it is where we are at the 60th year of our statehood. And what was drawn, we did not agree. We have placed on record in 16 point agreement, close to 12. And in 60 years, the so-called disputed area belt. So many Naga villages also has come up. Occupied. Administrative centers were also created. Even a district like Newland is created. But in that Nagaland map, it is outside Nagaland. So all these issues we have discussed time and again at the official level in the cabinet, but the maps are not updated. I'm not only talking to the assembly, to all the honorable members and to all the bureaucrats, the HODs and AHODs. Why we are not doing our homework? Why are we not updating? There are how many villages in the disputed area? We are only a small population. That's why compared to Assam, there is only few villages we had occupied. But there are multiple times more than Assam villages. And they are not only the indigenous people who are occupying. They are bringing illegal immigrants and placing in between to occupy the land. Indication issue is alive, but the transfer of forest is almost forgotten. And I would say even given up. There is a Supreme Court case going on, on the border dispute. And the border department and the bureaucrats, how much record you have, I don't know. Time and again. I have been talking about this, we should take this very seriously. And in the map, wherever Nagas are situated, their villages name should be there, and there should be a marking. We have discussed and I have seen the map, that there is a marking where Nagas are occupying. But in today's map, it is not there. That's why I am raising this issue. The forest area under disputed area belt are as many as nine. The Soy Valley Reserve Forest, the Soy Reserve Forest, Tiru Hills Reserve Forest, Opoipur Reserve Forest, Geliki Reserve Forest, Doyong Reserve Forest, Rengma Reserve Forest, Nambur South Reserve Forest, Nipur Reserve Forest. Totaling to one lakh six fifty six thousand seven hundred eleven point fifty three hectares. It's huge. And therefore, we are only quarreling where we are. We have forgotten because. We had feel like a defeated person. See, you look at this. We should immediately 
redrawn the map. It is already there, I know, where the Naga villages are there. In all the foothill area. This is not Nagaland. Nagaland is much more expanded. And so, you have a court case. And you take this to claim that border dispute. That you are admitting that you have no claim. Your Nagaland map is like this. So, I am just creating awareness that it should be updated and it should have all the records of forest, which area is what forest, which are under disputed. You see, where is Nagaban? Nagaban used to be the boundary, the demarcation it was there. It has appeared, disappeared. And we think that Nagaban, there was a primary school where voting used to take place for Tamlu constituency. But today, officially that polling station is there in the school, but our people cannot go to vote. That's why we are voting near the border somewhere. We don't know where. <clears throat> then your every seed farm. I have been there also. That is in Bhakti. Amirapani. So now our officers cannot go and see our land also. All those areas were foothills. Nagas are very foolish. Naga people acquire a lot of land, have all of big lands, and first they lease to the non Nagas. Some are sold to the Assamese people. Or others, knowing our weakness, they have gone and uh, got a pata from Assam. So now in court, what can we do? And if outside the court we want and settle also, the occupational right will be the topmost. And that's why I am worried about, we are talking about land and these resources belong to us. But we are losing all the best land that is ours. So my concern I'm showing, in every department or in court cases are demarcated Naga occupied and the areas should be <coughs> marked very clearly. Whatever interpretation court may say, I feel that Article 371A is a political agreement and I trust Government of India they will not go back from their political agreement. As I had mentioned, that is the only document that had assent, the Nagas given the assent to be a part of the union. As discussed and demanded by CSOs and as discussed in our cabinet, I think it is appropriate that uh, we pass a resolution to exempt the state of Nagaland from this purview because of the special provision of Article 371A. But what is due to us for the compensation that appropriate legislation can be passed in our state and we should claim. Otherwise, I had gone through the compensation received by other states in terms of 1,000 crores they got, as mentioned by somebody else. But in our case, we have no legislation and it is private and because of our ignorance, they have taken advantage, they have not paid. We are not talking of 
all the past, but in recent time, whatever roads taken by National Highway, by NHI DCL, I think we should pass the appropriate law and move for compensation of damaging forests and <coughs> conservation make, uh, which were destroyed. So with this few word, as I have mentioned, I propose a resolution with taking the sense of the house for our own protection and also make a legislation at the appropriate time to get the benefit of Kappa. Thank you. The leader of the House for the concluding remarks to the discussion under Rule 50 pertaining to the subject matter of the Forest Conservation Act of 2023. As responsible elected members, I thank all the honourable members for your proactiveness on the subject matter put forward for discussion under Rule 50 in today's uh, sitting. I therefore gather that the unanimous desire of the House is to pass a resolution with regard to the subject matter on the Forest Conservation Act of 2023 on similar lines uh, like the Uniform Civil Code as discussed uh, before forenoon today. In this regard, time will be given tomorrow to bring forth any resolution on this subject matter that this August House has discussed in today's <coughs> sitting. With this, all the business listed for today's sitting is completed. I therefore adjourn the house.